Okay. So the last big topic that we're going to talk about is JavaScript. And we're going to talk about JavaScript. Um, before we talk about specifics of JavaScript, we talked last time about the way client-server computing works, how there's a server that does a lot of processing to create a web page. And that delivers a completed web page to a client. Now, the client is a computer also most of the time, or a handheld device, something with a processor, something that can execute a program. So the idea is that you can take some functionality and send it to the client and let the client do it. And the idea of that is it's a win-win situation because if the client is doing it, then the server doesn't have to worry about it, which sort of lessens the load on the server. It also lessens the network traffic because in the case of functionality that has to happen on the server, the message has to go from the client all the way through the internet to the server and back. And again, that happens very quickly, but not as quickly as code can be executed right on the client computer. So remember again, we have the three parts of a typical web page. We have the HTML, which is the content. We have the CSS, which is the appearance. And then finally, we have the JavaScript, which is the behavior or the interactivity. So if we looked at an example like we did last time, we'll look at the same example. The Browns won, so this won't be too painful for the Browns fans out here anyhow. And as we request this web page from the server, the server creates the web page and delivers it to the client. And it delivers the content that we see, but it also delivers a lot of content that we don't see. For example, when we mouse over NFL, we get a whole submenu that occurs. So HTML has all that content in it. CSS says that this is invisible, and JavaScript changes that when we put our mouse over it. So we're going we're to have that formula throughout most of the examples. I won't say all of JavaScript is like that, but a good amount of JavaScript is like that. It consists of changing an existing web page by changing the HTML and CSS properties of the different content on the page. Um, and it's triggered by some user action. And the user action would be the things that you would expect, the, the ways that a user can interact with a web page by clicking, by putting their mouse over something, by uh, typing something on the keyboard, that sort of thing. So we're going to re we're going to create sort of a a small scale version of that uh, of the drop down menus like that. And we started to do that last time, and we're going to continue with that this time. So let me download the example that we had last time. That's it. 
that will have to recreate it. So we have this page, and as I put my mouse over that, we get the submenu appearing. So we're going to take and we're going to refine this to make it maybe not as complete as the ESPN page, but functionally where it will be, it'll do the same sort of thing. Let's edit this and be on our way. All right. I had an extra one of these, so I'll get rid of that. I'm also going to put the style in its own page just because I could do a million examples of having the style sheet separate from the HTML, but if I do one where the style is in the HTML, then people think it's good to do that and continue to do that. And it's not. I just did that because I was in a rush for time uh, last time. So I'll create a new file for the style sheet and I will copy this in. And create a link to it. All right, so don't tell me I broke it. I did break it. How are we going to figure out what I did? Well, unless you happen to notice what I did. Oh. There we go. I'm not exactly sure why that is not working on Google Chrome. Um, and I'm just going to leave that for now. OK. And I know that's a bad thing to do, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to um, leave that for now. OK. So we're back to where we were. So I'm editing these guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the rest of the submenus do the same thing. 
So I'm going to go and I'm going to put a submenu for each of these things. And I'm going to change the IDs because remember, each of these IDs has to be unique. So I cannot have two things with the submenu of one, uh, with an ID of submenu one. Because if I do that, when I say on mouse over, show submenu one, then it's going to be confused which one to do. So I have to give each one its own ID. And then I'm going to go and make the JavaScript for each of these point to the right ID. So the first one shows submenu 1. This one is going to show submenu 2. This one is going to show submenu 3. This one will show submenu 4. And so on the line. If I save this, thank you. If I save it and open it up, okay. Well, it sort of works, but they're all, but the first one is showing. I need to hide the rest of them. Probably the easiest way to hide the rest of them is instead of saying, I could say sub item 1 is no display, sub item 2 dis is no display, and so on. But I'm going to change, I'm going to make a class for sub items. And then I'll make each one of the sub menus have a class of sub item. So I'm going to say class equals subitems. That way I can hide all of them all at once. Remember, use a class when you are talking about one specific thing and you use, or use an ID when you're talking about one specific thing. You use a class when you want to talk about a group of things. Here I want to make all the submenus invisible. So it would be better off to do a class rather than hide them individually. did something wrong here. Oh, I got to save this guy too. There we go. So now all of them are invisible. Why are they all invisible? Because they all have a class of sub-items. And the class for sub-items, the rule is to say display none. When I show them, I only want to show them one at a time. So I will say sub items uh, 1, that's the ID that I'm going to show. So I'm showing them by ID because I want to show them one at a time. I can hide them all by class because I want to hide the whole group at one time at the beginning. So on mouse over, that describes the user action, this link. When the mouse goes on the link, I want to point to the thing on the page that has an ID of sub-item 1. I then want to change its style, specifically the display of the style, I want to change to block. 
Now notice a couple things. First of all, the case of this matters. So notice that the D in document is lowercase. The G in get is lowercase. The E in element is uppercase. So is the B in the I. It needs to be that way. If it's not that way, JavaScript will not recognize it as a valid instruction. In HTML, you can kind of get away with not caring about whether you use capitals or small letters. I've used lowercase letters the whole time, right? But you could actually make your tags have capital letters, and it would work just fine, all right? Whereas with JavaScript, it's case sensitive, so the case matters, all right? Notice also the use of quotation marks. This, the double quotes are used to enclose the whole statement. And then inside the double quotes, you see single quotes. If you use double quotes here, it would think that's the end of the statement right here. And it wouldn't work, all right? Because the end of the statement is actually over here. So where we use quotes inside the statement, we use a single quote. Sub menu, sub item one, block. Those are things that, because they're not commands, they are pointing to specific things and pointing to specific values, we use single quotes around them. All right. Now, notice that they don't go away, though, when we take our mouse off of it. So that's one thing that we want to take care of. And we can take care of it by just sort of doing the opposite statement. There's an on mouse over. There also is an on mouse out. That's an event that happens. And we can write code to do something when that event occurs. So I can say on mouse out, and I do almost the same thing. Document get element by ID, sub item one, style, dis instead of display equal block, I'm going to say display equals none. So that will make it invisible again. So I can copy that for. each of the things, and then all of them, the link will, the, the submenus will appear, and the submenus will disappear. So if I save that and refresh, I put my mouse on it, it appears. I take my mouse off it, it disappears. We run into little difficulties like this, because as it expands, it uh, moves the, the main menu around, so we have an issue with that. Uh, there's probably a few ways that I could fix that maybe putting some space in between the LIs will do that. Maybe some space between the, yeah, between the LIs. Let's orient these horizontally. And to do that, I have to orient
could do this a few different ways, but I'm going to say ULLI display inline and sub items I'm going to display going to display black. Let's see what that does for us. We still have that thinking problem. All right. Fortunately, I'm like the chef on a cooking show. If the thing I'm making in front of you doesn't work out, I can always go to the oven and pull out a correct version of it. So let me go, rather than sitting here debugging it, let me go and find a version of this that works. And we'll look at it. Okay, I have a menu. know what I did different on this one. Let's look at the code. I have my style in here. I have on the LI, I have on mouse over, I'm showing the submenu, and I'm setting the background color to yellow. That way I can show what the user has selected. I can also say on the mouse out, set it back to not display and set the background color to white. And then I do that for each of these things. So the key to this. User event that kicks things off on mouse over. I use document get element by ID to point to things on the page. In this case, I point to the submenu and I make the display visible. I also give a background color to the LI that the user has put their mouse on. And then on mouse out, I set everything back to the way it was. Questions about this? Is there any Absolutely. So like, for example, they use what's called camel case for a lot of things. So for example, the first letter of the word is lowercase. Then each word after that, the first letter is uppercase. So in get element by ID, the G is lowercase, the E is uppercase, the B and I are uppercase. And if you don't do this right, it doesn't work. So if I change that to a lowercase E and save this, if I put my mouse on it, it doesn't work. How do you tell and how do you figure out what's going on? The first thing to do is if you're in the Chrome browser, you click the little dots here, you go to more tools, 
and you select developers tools. Then you will see a console and the console will show you the error. Now unfortunately like with most errors that programs give you, it's not always obvious exactly what the problem is. But with a little bit of reading, usually it, you can sort of figure it out. For example, it says document get element by ID is not a function. So you look at that and say, well, wait a minute. We study that in class. I know there's something called dot, uh, get element by ID. But remember, it's case sensitive. So if it says it's not a function, check the spelling. And when you check the spelling, check to make sure that, that it's the right case. So in this case, if I look at it, oh, get element, that's supposed to be lowercase, but the E is supposed to be uppercase. So I can fix that and be good to go. There we go. And then when we load the page, we don't get any air and it works. All right. Now what was going on in my other one? Let's take a quick look at it. Oh, I, I understand that. I want to know what is wrong with the code that's causing them to do that. What am I missing? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Duh. Thank you. Of course they are. There they go. So now they're the same. And both of them work. Thank you. Good, good, good call. Good call on that. You can tell us on Monday morning. Okay. So I have another version of the menu too that works a little bit different. And this, if you click on it, the submenu shows up but it deliberately stays open until you click on it again and hide it. This is just a different way to do the navigation. It's sort of like in Windows Explorer where you can expand folders and then click on them to hide them again. This is about the same with just a little bit of a twist in it. And the difference is, if we look at this, Instead of on mouse over, we use on click. So that's the first thing that's different. So the user action that sort of invokes this, that gets the ball rolling, is not the on mouse over, it's the on click. The second difference is this calls a function. All right? Notice in this case we have a couple statements that we do when the mouse goes over it couple statements we do when the mouse goes over it. Once you get more than one or two statements, 
If you have a bunch of statements that are going to get executed when the user puts their mouse on a link or something, it's going to get very hard to read. Or you're going to have a whole string of statements. So what you can do is you can group instructions together and call the function. And then whenever you want to do that function, you just call that function. You give the name of the function, and then all those statements get executed. There's another really good thing about functions as well, and that is you can pass them an argument. All right? An argument is the thing that you want the function to do something with. All right? In other words, if we look at this first example, the on mouse over and on mouse out, we're doing the exact same thing. We're just doing it to different submenus. If we put our mouse over this, we show submenu 1, and we change the background color to yellow. We change submenu 1, and we change the background color to white. Here we do the same thing except the submenu 2. Here we do the same thing except the submenu 3, and so on. As a programmer, if you notice that you have code that's duplicated, code that's almost identical with just a couple of little differences, then that's a good candidate for a function. And you pass in as an argument the thing that you want the function to act upon. So for example, in Excel, there's a function to do a square root, right? I don't know if you know it or not, but there is. It's like SQRT. So there's not a different function to do a square root of 4 or a square root of 16 or whatever. There's one square root function, and you say what you want it the square root of. I want to do the square root of the number that's in this cell or the number that's in that cell. Same function, but you're telling it to do that function on something different. Same idea here. I have a function that's called toggle. And what the toggle function does is it shows the thing if it's hidden, and it hides the thing if it's showed, shown. And I pass in, as an argument to the function, the submenu that I want to show or hide. So when the user clicks on this one, I call the function toggle menu, and I give it the value of submenu 1. Here I do the same thing, but I give it the argument of submenu 2, submenu 3. Whatever I call the function for gets put into this argument. That's a placeholder for the name of the thing that I want to do something for. So here, if I say what my code says is if that element is showing, I'm going to make it hidden. Otherwise, I'm going to show it. So instead of having separate code to say submenu one is, if submenu 1 is showing, if submenu 2 is showing, if submenu 3 is showing, I just have a generic function that says, hey, however many of these things are, if the one that you're looking at now is showing, then hide it. Otherwise, show it. So I do it with an argument. That saves me from having to have the same code duplicated for every submenu that I want to show or hide. This is an if statement. <coughs> the way the if statement works is it looks and it sees if the condition is true or false. The condition is between the parentheses. Notice in this case, I say if the display equals true, but I use two equal signs. That's an important thing of JavaScript as well. If you're comparing two things, you, you use two equal signs. If you're changing something, then you use one equal sign. So I look to see if the thing that has an ID of whatever the argument is, so submenu 1 in this case, submenu 2 in this case, submenu 3, if that is visible, then I'm going to hide it. Otherwise, I'm going to show it. 
And I do it based on whether the user clicks on it, not whether the user puts their mouse on it or not. So same idea. We have all this content that gets delivered. The CSS displays it the way that it should. And the JavaScript changes it by allowing us to, when I click on it, it will show it. And when it clicks on it, it will hide it. Questions about this? Yes? You could put the JavaScript in an external file if you wanted to, absolutely. Just like with the CSS. And the advantage of doing that is the same thing with CSS, is if you have the JavaScript in an external file, then you can use the same JavaScript on other pages that have the same sort of thing. So if I had a whole website that had you know, eight pages, a dozen pages, a hundred pages, and they all had this kind of menu on it, I could put in an external file this JavaScript and just include that external file and everyone would use it. So you're absolutely right. Now, here's the thing. We can do anything with this JavaScript that we want. All right? Anything might be an overstatement, but any changes to the web page we want to do, we can accomplish. If we just follow the rules and follow the pattern, uh, we're going to use document get element ID a lot because that will allow us to point to a thing on the page and make changes to it. All right? So whatever those changes are, make it visible or invisible, make it bigger or smaller, change the color of it. All those things we can do. All right? So let's make a small page to ch let's make a small page that allows you to change the color of the page. Uh, allows us to change the background color of the page. Okay? So Let's go and do that. So I'm going to go, I'm going to copy this guy. I actually didn't want to do that. Let's put a button on this page. Now notice I'm using an input type equals button. That's different than a submit button. Remember in HTML forms, when you have a submit button, that means you're sending data to the server. A plain old button like this, a button button, allows us to run some JavaScript. So it's not going to send anything to the server. And I'm going to make the value of this button change to yellow. And I'm going to put on the button, on click, I'm going to change this to yellow. So I'm going to give it an ID. We could actually do it other ways, but we've been working with IDs, so we're going to stick with that for now. So on click. On click is a user action that's going to initiate this. All right? So when we get to a certain point, it is going to 
And when we click on it, that's going to initiate the action. So what do I want to do? I want to change this section of the page to be yellow. First thing I have to do is I have to point to it. Document. That means somewhere on the page, get element by ID says find that thing on the page that has an ID of whatever the ID we're interested in is. And we're interested in Maine. What do I want to do with that? I want to change something about the style of it. What do I want to change about the style? I change the background color. And what do I want to change it to? I want to change it to yellow. So we have a button, change to yellow. We click this, and nothing happened. No, we. There's some weird setting on this machine that the Microsoft browsers aren't working, go figure, correctly. So I'll open it up in Chrome. Change to yellow, and there we go. Changes it to yellow. Yeah, there's something. Yeah. So I changed to yellow. And why do I do that? I do this just to point out that Anything about this, we can change. All right? In fact, I'm going to just change the button to say change. And we're going to show you a sampling of the things I want to change. What if I want to change the font size? I could change the font size to 2M. make it bigger. So you could add this to a page that this would be a nice little accessibility thing. You could add this to a page to say, well, this is for big text. This is for normal text. And you can change it. Make it big, make it normal. All right? I'm doing this just to give you a sense that anything that you can set in the style properties, you can change via JavaScript. Now, the one thing to note is when you do font size in CSS, you say font dash size. In JavaScript, it becomes font size with the S capitalized, and there's no dash. All right, that's one thing to sort of keep, keep in mind as you're doing this. All right, we'll go over more examples on Wednesday of playing around with this. But experiment. Take this example and put buttons on to change anything about the page. Change the position of the page. Change something from float light right to float left, or vice versa, and move stuff around your page if you want to. Uh, it's good to experiment and to find out what you can do, because then you can see and maybe get ideas of how you can use it to do something useful on your page. Okay, we'll see you up in lab.